Hello and thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This video is going to kick off a series of about four or five videos and we're going to try to really dive into uh, TIG welding settings and the effect that they have on the arc. We're going to be using an Everlast Power TIG 250EX TIG inverter uh, for this demonstration also with uh, a Gentech welding lathe. What we're doing here is I've got a piece of aluminum tubing chucked up in a Gentech welding lathe and I've got uh, this Everlast Power TIG 250EX uh, for the power source and we're going to talk about TIG welding inverter settings because as you can see there's a lot of freaking knobs on there and whether it's digital or just with knobs like this uh, there's still there's a lot of settings and understanding them all uh, is something that uh, very few people get a handle on. So, now I like this because I like the uh, the knob situation because they're all visible. I don't have to go into any hidden menus like I do on a, some kind of Iron Man watch or something and get into this mode and that mode and get in the background thing to set things. Everything's visible right in front of me. So, so uh, there's a lot of confusion on uh, what's up and we're going to talk about that. Now this looks kind of weird, I know, but what I've got what I've got here is I've got a stationary torch hooked up to this welding machine, but I've still got to control the uh, switch for the torch uh, hooked in the remote slot here. So I'm just using this button with the uh, with the 4T position and uh, using it for an automated switch. Looks funny, got a torch in my hand, but I'm running that torch. But anyway, what we want to do here is um, check. TIG welding parameters without the influence of the operator. So, because when you when you set pulse settings, one guy will set pulse and you can't really tell the difference because he's making adjustments without even uh, without without even knowing it. Another guy will look all different. So, if we if we set this thing up with a constant travel speed, torch uh, arc length is stable, torch angle is stable, travel speed is stable, we get the operator out of the picture. And then we can make a true evaluation on whether the machine will run a good beat or not. Sound fair? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to kick off a series of videos on TIG welding inverter settings. We're going to talk about all the, all the settings, pre-flow, post-flow, 2T, 4T, upslope, downslope, start amps, end amps, AC frequency, what it is, uh, AC balance, what it is, what's the, high, what's the difference between high frequency and the frequency of the AC balance and the frequency of the pulse because that word high frequency gets thrown around all the time and people people get confused because high frequency meant a different thing on a 20 year old machine uh, than, it, than it does today on an inverter. So we're going to talk about that and what it does. We're going to talk about pulse parameters and, and how to set them and basically kind of what effect they have and uh, hopefully when we're, when we're done you'll have a lot better understanding of uh, whether you got an Everlast or a Miller Dynasty 200DX or whatever they're, they're all very similar once you understand uh, once you understand what the settings are. So again, I've got a piece of aluminum tubing that I'm running beads on here. You can you can kind of see uh, there'll, be, there'll be some more in this video where you can see close-ups of the different appearance of the beads. But I've got it pulsing about uh, one pulse a second just to put some ripples in the bead so it won't look funny. Aluminum bead washed without any ripples doesn't doesn't impress anybody. So I've got it pulsing just to just to cool and, and uh, put some ripples in it. That's all. So uh, that's what we're that's what we're doing. We're kicking off this series, and uh, there'll probably be I don't know. I haven't really figured it out yet, but it, it'll probably be at least five or six videos. Break it down and talk about about maybe two things at a time. We'll talk about all the pulse settings at once. Probably talk about all the AC settings at once, the AC balance and the uh, and the uh, AC frequency and two T four T. That'll be another one, and we'll just see what it takes to cover it all. Maybe we can do it in four. I don't know, but this is the first one. So uh, so far, uh, the Everlast 250EX has got a good arc, and uh, it's running a good stable bead. 
Another thing I noticed on here when I'm pulsing on this aluminum tubing, it really maintains the bead width a lot better than without pulse, where it gets out of hand because the heat just builds and builds. Pulsing controls heat input, uh, at least a little bit anyway, and keeps that bead focused a little bit more. All right, well, let's see what happens. One of the settings on some TIG inverters is pulse, and uh, by pulsing on aluminum, uh, you're able to uh, avoid heat buildup. It's kind of like using a 6010 rod with a whip and pause motion. It lets the puddle momentarily freeze and just keeps it from getting hotter and hotter and wider and wider. So on this aluminum tubing, it came in really handy in maintaining the bead width. It looked a lot better than a bead that was just run without any ripples or out any pulse. I think you can agree we've got this uh, 250EX set dialed in pretty good where it's capable of running a good uniform bead. Uh, either pulsing or not pulsing and uh, you can see this uh, close up there's some cleaning action outside the bead and we'll talk about what that is uh, a little bit later when we when we talk about the TIG welding controls. This video is not about pulse we're going to talk mainly about AC frequency uh, and a little bit about AC balance. The frosty looking area uh, just outside the bead is obtained by adjustment of the AC balance. You get the cleaning or it's also also called cathodic etching from the electrode positive side uh, of alternating current. Alternating current has electrode positive and electrode negative going on at the same time so uh, inverters typically have AC balance and let you adjust how much of each because you don't always need a lot but you usually need some so uh, this uh, 250EX the AC balance is a little is set kind of opposite from most machines but uh, uh, set more to the left which means actually more electrode negative sometimes you want more sometimes you want less see the frosty looking area again outside the bead is is where the electrode positive is breaking up the aluminum oxide now the AC frequency is actually changing how rapidly the electrode negative and the electrode positive uh, change back and forth you can hear the pitch of the arc change here as I increase the AC frequency up to pretty much max 250 Hertz. Now where would you need that? You might not ever need it, but if you need to pinpoint uh, a small drop of weld on a corner of a lug, or if you need to patch a small pit in an aluminum injection mold, you don't always want a big balled up electrode and a big wide uh, bead. You, you'll be able to pinpoint the heat. Uh, high frequency uh, AC current also allows you to pick up the travel speed on automated applications if you were to run one like uh, I've got set up in this in this uh, welding lathe. So uh, typically uh, typically 100 to 120 will weld pretty much anything. If you just want to just want a default setting to weld most anything on, that's a good one. Somewhere around 100 to 120. You may not ever need 250, but it's there again if you need the precision of a tightly focused uh, alternating current bead. Okay, so that's pretty much the breakdown on AC frequency uh, and AC balance. Um, pulse parameters we'll talk about in a uh, in a separate uh, video. Just to, just know that there are usually three settings for pulse parameters, which is uh, pulse frequency, also called pulses per second or PPS. Pulse amps, which in, on this machine is called pulse amps, many times referred to as the background current, but this is actually referring to the uh, peak pulse amps. And then the pulse on time, which is also referred to as pulse width. So here again is a close-up shot of, the, of a bead run on aluminum, automated, no amperage control, just set, at, but uh, using about one pulse a second, and these pulse settings uh, that you see set right here. So there's a lot of leeway, a lot of uh, wiggle, wiggle room and fudge factor there on pulse settings, but uh, we'll talk about it, what they do, uh, in a later video. So, so far, the Everlast Power, uh, the Power TIG 250EX, has uh, shown to run a very uniform bead, very stable arc, uh, adjustable on uh, AC frequency. You, you heard the adjustment uh, and also it's got pulse capability. So stay tuned for the next video and we'll talk about uh, all the rest of those freaking knobs.